Uh, yeah, great to see everybody here, and thank you for the intro, Brian. Uh, I'm not sure what I do at Adobe also, but uh, I actually do work on PhoneGap. Uh, I'm happy to say that, which is obviously very exciting. And so, so I'm here, I'm going to just talk a little bit about uh, PhoneGap 2.0, um, some of the features and things that are in there that are of note and uh, important for you people and for web devs in general here. So let's uh, jump right into it. Uh, we have come <coughs> quite a long way since 1.0. So um, we had a PhoneGap day uh, in the United States as well, in Portland, uh, just in July. And that marked essentially our uh, one-year anniversary from 1.0 to 2.0. And uh, there has been a lot of uh, advancements that we've done. You know, there's been a whole bunch of new contributors, um, including some of the ones that I think Andre already mentioned there at the, at the beginning. Um, the technology's come a long, long way. You know, the hardware, the phones, the devices, um, the number of operating systems. So much has changed uh, over that time. So one of the biggest things for us at, at PhoneGap is certainly the movement of the PhoneGap source code into the Apache Software Foundation, now at, known as Apache Cordova, or the incubating project known as Apache Cordova. And uh, it's going to, with any luck, soon be actually a real project in Apache, which is really exciting. And that's coming up, up pretty soon here, actually. Um, so this whole, the whole transfer to the Apache Software Foundation has been uh, good and bad, I think, in the end. It, it's been really good for the community in general and for, for the project itself. And like Andre mentioned and I've already said, we've gotten a lot of new contributors because we've gone to Apache. Um, the code's gotten a lot better and the project is just visibility has gotten a lot better as well. So, so in general, the ASF has been really great for, uh, a great home for the uh, PhoneGap source code. Uh, on the technical side, of course, there's been a whole bunch of awesome things. This is a picture of Gord Tanner uh, lying on the ground. I'm sure he's drunk or something. Uh, you can just barely see him there. Uh, so Cordova JS, of course, is a picture of Gord because he really spearheaded the, the effort around Cordova JS, which the idea being that we actually do have one JavaScript file that runs on all the platforms. I know, kind of crazy, right? Um, so of course, in PhoneGap 1.0, you had a different JavaScript that you had to include for every platform that you were building for. Uh, the fruition of this vision of having actually one JavaScript that runs on every single platform, Cordova.js, um, sort of came to fruition in uh, PhoneGap 2.0. And it's, it's really awesome, so you can actually take one JavaScript and put it in and run stuff. Uh, documentation, of course, we're an open source project. Uh, so documentation traditionally is a very difficult thing for open source projects. Uh, I think we've come a long, long way uh, from 1.0 to now in terms of documentation. Uh, the new documentation, not just the API documentation, but documentation around things like plugins, um, getting started guides for the various platforms. Uh, and a whole bunch of other things. If you go to docs.phoneapp.com now, you'll see there's just a lot more information there. And uh, Michael Brooks, in particular, has really spearheaded this effort and has done, done an amazing job on that. But in general, it's been a real good community effort there. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about platforms, and so there have been a whole bunch of new platforms uh, come out over the past year. Uh, things like Windows Phone 7. So Microsoft is actually contributing uh, Windows Phone 7, and then the community at large as well. Uh, Samsung Bata, the, the WAC version of Samsung Bata has also been contributed. Uh, we saw already a, a presentation there about the Tizen contribution, so that's going to be interesting. We'll see, you know, a lot of these things too, like Firefox OS, um, you know, they're, they're sort of small platforms right now, of course, uh, the two big ones being Android and iOS, but uh, we'll see where these go, and it's, it's really interesting, and it's great to see these being contributed to the platform. Uh, the one other thing, actually, in the Facebook talk, of course, they mentioned the Dolphin browser. And the Dolphin browser, they've actually implemented the PhoneGap APIs in the Dolphin browser as well, which is kind of cool. So they have essentially like a PhoneGap uh, Dolphin browser extension, so you can actually run your PhoneGap apps on the web in the browser uh, using Dolphin, which is quite cool. Uh, embedded web view, sort of like the Cordova JS, I think, uh, in terms of the technology side of things, the embedded web view is uh, one of the cooler things that we've done, actually. So on iOS and Android, we've re-architected things so you can actually build a more of a proper, uh, quote unquote, hybrid application. Uh, so you can actually have multiple web views and integrate it into your native code however you like. So you can just put in a Cordova, Cordova view and you can have multiple of them and they all are PhoneGap enabled or Cordova API enabled um, and just running web content. But, so you, then you can mix and match native content with web content a lot more easily, which is really cool. Of course, out of the box right now still, you know, the, the idea is that you just have one web view and that's your entire application is a web view. Um, but we just 
we architected things a little bit so that you have the option of going full web view or you can just have parts of your application being a web view. So a lot like the uh, aforementioned Facebook uh, previously uh, hybrid app was, was done a lot in that way. So they mixed a lot of native and web views. Uh, plugins are uh, actually another huge uh, advancement. So we always had this like janky plugin thing so you could sort of call JavaScript into native, native JavaScript if you wanted, and you could extend the platform, sort of. Um, it changed a lot going from 1.0 to 2.0. Uh, it's evolved a lot and now sort of at 2.0, we're, we're happy with it, we have documentation about it now, uh, and we're sort of saying, yes, plugins are ready to go. This is the API that you can use to extend and, and build on top of Cordova itself. Uh, so that's a really exciting thing, actually. And so things like the, uh, the Facebook single sign-on plugin so that you can actually uh, integrate with the native Facebook SDK on iOS and Android, and you can actually just integrate with that right from JavaScript in your PhoneGap application, which is very cool. Um, you know, the popular ones like the child browser plugin. Uh, so there's a whole, obviously a whole community of plugins as well that is available on GitHub. And we're doing a lot of work going forward, which is not there yet, but um, we're looking at installation, uh, you know, removal, discovery of plugins. So it makes it a lot easier right now. People have to go to GitHub um, and go to the PhoneGap plugins repository. Uh, <coughs> but in the future, we are going to have something more like NPM or RubyGems or what have you. So you'll be able to discover and install uh, plugins really easily, which uh, the work is ongoing right now. There's a, actually a huge discussion about it in the mailing list as we speak, uh, which you should go check out if you're interested in that, actually, and, and interested in knowing where it's going and, and helping to even define the direction of that. Along the lines of plugin installation and discovery and so on, we have CLI tooling is actually baked into 2.0 now. So previously, there were, again, some other janky ways of uh, command line scripting to create and, and manage your projects. Uh, so now we actually have, uh, in particular, create and debug commands from the command line that you can use on all the platforms. So you can, this is just a, a simple example of what it would look like. You would run your uh, dot slash bin create and then some parameters and that's gonna actually create your iOS or your Android application uh, right there for you and so you can actually run debug, and in some cases you can run emulate even right now. And that's a work in progress, but currently create and debug work everywhere, um, which is super cool. And so it actually helps us get away from Xcode and things like that as well, which we're all very happy about. Woo. Um, winery, uh, I know Pat, I can see him like sitting over there, uh, creator of Winery. It's really uh, cool that Winery actually got contributed to the Cordova project in Apache as well. Um, and Winery, you're going to see more about it. If you don't know about it, you're going to see more about it this afternoon. Uh, super amazing tool, really the most important tool that you have as a phone app developer, I think, um, for, for debugging and building your applications. And so that's really awesome that it's actually part of the Apache Software Foundation now as well in the Cordova project. And I think that those are sort of the big points I wanted to hit. Uh, and if you want to know anything more, feel free to obviously talk to me or, or whatever. And uh, thanks very much for coming out today, and I hope uh, everyone has a good day. And thanks, Brian, for emceeing. Word. <laughs> um, so we're going we're gonna to attempt to do Ian's talk again. Um, but while he gets set up, which could be harrowing, um, we're going to do a very quick question period. Because uh, I think people, we were going to try and avoid questions until the committer panel at the end, but um, we think that We've heard from you that you guys want to ask some questions, so um, I think Klein has a mic. Oh, there he is right there. So if you've got a question for us, uh, Klein's got the mic, so fire up your hand. This is the part where everyone's like, I don't have a question. Oh, we do have a question. Oh. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm very interested in using native sound. Um, so have you got any experience implementing like core audio in PhoneGap? Yeah, uh, there's a dude named Andy Trice that works at Adobe, and he's got a thing called uh, Low Latency Audio Plugin, I think, um, yeah. that fixes core audio. So right now, um, it, uh, this is actually in my talk later, but uh, we went to Zynga and we were talking to them about HTML5 audio, and they're like, we're like, you know, how is it? And they're like, well, it's fucked. And we're like, <laughs> right. So our plan for 3.0 is to unfuck it. <laughs> um, so. 
there are plugins uh, right now just for iOS to fix the latency issues uh, that we see in HTML5 audio and iOS in particular, and it uses core audio. All so. right. Oh, cheers. So another very, very quick question sure. about using large databases, because I've had problems with like 25 meg limit on uh, SQLite databases using like from JavaScript. So do you have to do everything natively, and have you got a plugin for that? In uh, PhoneGap, uh, our implementation of WebSQL does not have limits. All oh, right, right. So you can be as crazy as you want. On, on the iPhone, it seems to have uh, some It sort should of not. It should not. But another question you have to ask yourself is if, if you want to use WebSQL, it's somewhat deprecated um, mm. for IndexedDB, although IndexedDB isn't implemented anywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's web tech. I mean, it's not perfect. So uh, usually when you're dealing with SQL, you're dealing with relational data and it's normalized. Uh, but when you're displaying this stuff, uh, usually you want to have it in aggregate uh, in some form. And that's, that's when documents actually make a whole lot of sense. So you might want to consider taking your uh, normalized data off your database turning it into JSON, and then loading it right on the device. Yeah, it tends to be how we prefer to do it. At some point, file reader was actually faster by like hundreds of percent uh, than using an XHR to read JSON data. However, Daniel Kirka, who does PhoneGap GWT, just informed me that we have regressed. So um, I guess use an XHR to read it for now. Oh, cheers. Thank you. Cool. Do we have any other questions? Did you guys figure it out? No. Right on. <laughs> well, uh, why don't we rock up to the Distimo? Uh, oh, we have another question? Okay, cool. Yes, I have a question uh, for the dis discovery of the plugins. Is there uh, an easy way to find out the newest plugins? Is there a Twitter account somewhere you can uh, follow? Well, you can follow the GitHub repo. Uh, it's github.com slash phonegap slash phonegap dash plugins. That's our, I know. I, Come on, man. I mean, what else are you going to call it? Um, so it's PhoneGap dash plugins. That repo uh, is where all the latest plugins are currently. Uh, like Dave mentioned, there's uh, work going on right now where we're trying to implement um, our own plugin discovery mechanisms like CPAN or PyPy or RubyGems or NPMJS, except for we're going to do it better. <laughs> Can't do it any worse. Oh, we have another question. Yep. One day I had this crazy like idea about getting uh, some uh, notification background, but after Googling it, uh, the first five entries scared me so much, I ruled out this idea. So yeah. how, how is it now on iOS, especially? Background notifications? Yeah, yeah. you, you create an, some JavaScript notification, and you don't see the app in the foreground. It, it runs in background. Is it possible? No. Thanks. Thanks, Apple. <laughs> Single process model. Uh, I think you can do music, geo, one other thing in the background in iOS. Um, but that's it. Do you want to do your talk early? We have another. Oh, we have another question first. Go for it, man. Um, you, talking about uh, winery everywhere, does that apply to, that, that doesn't apply to the Windows Phone 7, does it? Not yet, but Pat Mueller is here. and. You should talk to him about Winery and Windows Phone 7. And if you see any Microsoft people, oh, Pat can answer this way better than me. There's a, a patch in the queue right now for Windows Phone 7, actually. It's not, I don't think it gets everything working, but some of the stuff is working. So uh, somebody took that on and um, needed a few tweaks to it, uh, but hopefully we'll get it in in a week or two. We'll do another build. And we'll have something running for Windows Phone 7. Wow, awesome. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, another question? Anyone? Dude in the green shirt that's inconveniently located in the very fucking middle of the, of the venue. <laughs> Buying us time, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have a question for um, Simon. Is he still here? Yeah, Simon's right over there. All right, Inconveniently, Simon. the exact opposite of the venue from awesome. where the other mic is. <laughs> Buying uh, us even more time. Regarding the, the deep linking of, uh, the fa from within the Facebook app to like your own app, uh, does that work? Because if I end up in the app store, I'm like, yeah, fuck, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah, uh, the... 
if the user has the native app installed, then it works brilliantly. Mm -hmm. But at the time we link out of the native Facebook iOS app, we don't know what iOS is going to do next, whether or not it's going to honor that request into the app installed, or whether or not it's going to direct them to the app store. So the bad news about that flow is the user goes into the app store, downloads the app, installs it, and at that point, the data that was passed in the deep link has dropped because there's no other way for us to pass and that along. Do, do you have any numbers uh, on people actually installing an app? Because I'm not installing something on Edge. I'm no, not yet. But um, one of the things I didn't talk about today is that we've launched the ability for you to buy uh, mobile ads that uh, result in installs. And as part of that, we need a way to track that the install happened and it started from a Facebook flow. So um, that tech does allow us to actually measure that for the first time. But I don't have any stats today. All right, cool. If only there was something like intense. <laughs> Maybe you can intend to do something oh, in iOS. Sure. Another question. Hey, Brian. Hi. Um, do you have any idea like what are different solution we could use to uh, receive payments on PhoneGap? We've been using PayPal, but it didn't work quite well before uh, Cordova. I know they've been working on updating their library. Yeah, this is uh, so. This is kind of like the new battlefront in mobile. Uh, everybody wants to be the payment gateway. Um, we're seeing well, the credit card companies want to be the payment gateway, and the carriers want to be the payment gateway. Um, and so there's new uh, carrier billing APIs kind of rolling out across the United States, Canada, and, and in parts of Europe. I think it's called like the GSMA one API, um, which is one way you could do this, but the problem is it's carrier locked. So you'll have to re-implement your payment solution for every platform you want to ship it on. Um, there's no phone gap for payments yet. And maybe that's actually a good thing when you think about it. Um, no easy answers here. I know uh, I've been hearing good things about Stripe, but I don't have any idea. Sorry. <laughs> In-app purchase uh, plugin though, can help you if you're doing iOS. 